Good morning. God is good. All the time. Open up your the favorite hymns of prayer, the favorite 2270 in your the faith in the the faith we sing. Page Merciful God, hear our prayers and be gracious to us, for the lives we live are not worthy of our calling. Too often we heed other voices wandering worse than your own. We have wavered in our faith and wandered from your path. We forget who we are because we forget who you are. By your grace, O oh God, forgive us. Restore us to the fullness of life in the spirit of Jesus Christ. Make us your grateful servants whose greatest joy is to praise you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Open your United Methodist hymnal to page 698, God of Ages, of the Ages.
by a big air hug. On the right hand side of the bulletin is the calendar of events. Today is a spiritual gifts class at 6 p.m. at Mount Tabor. The midweek Bible study Wednesday at 6.30 at Jarrett. Next Sunday, Mount Tabor is having a Sunday Sunday at 5.30 there. <laughs> so. And everyone here is invited. Yes. <laughs> and thought for today, God looks at me with love and cares for me. And we have a birthday. Mary I's birthday is August 9th. Everyone sent her a car to wish her her best wish, wish, wishes. It, open, open your handle to page 882 for the affirmation of faith. Please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he arose again, he ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. children's time for with Pat. I am going to give you questions today and see if you if you can guess who they are the first one I was a young woman who found favor favor with God I was chosen to do something great I was visited by an angel I became the mother of God's only son. Who am I? Somebody said I don't know. Mary. Mary? Mary. Anybody? Mary. Okay. Everybody did a good job. But I got you a couple more. Who am I? I lived, but I was never born. I gave all the animals their names. I lived in a beautiful garden named Eden. I was the very first man. Who am I? Adam. Very good. All right, I got another two more for you. This one was, I was my father's favorite son. My brothers 
hated me. My brothers sold me as a slave. I wore a coat of many colors. Who am I? Joseph. Joseph. Who am I? I was just a little shepherd boy. I liked to play the harp. I was pretty good with a cling slingshot. Probably better for a kid. I almost became famous for killing a giant. Who am I? David. David. Very good. Ah, this one is very easy. Some people thought I was a great teacher. Some people thought I was John the Baptist. Some people thought that I was Elijah and um, one of the prophets. I am the Son of God. Who am I? Jesus. Jesus. All right, that was very, very good. Can we uh, have a prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that we have this ab ability that we can be here we can worship you and be in your home. Be with us as we leave and that people know that we have been here and that we are one of your children. Thank you, Lord, for all that you put forward of us and help us with everything you do. Amen.
be seated. Is there any joys today? Yes, my Haley graduated from high school with a 4.4. Wow. Grandma's very proud. And her dad, Craig, has a new job. He was vice principal at Brown County High, and now he's principal at Spencer Middle School. How about prayer requests? Of course, oh, we always have to marry Barbara and Ira, and Mary and Eddie, and all the foster kids, and Lisa Paxton. Yeah, Lisa, um, she hasn't got any planned yet, but they're talking about going to Cleveland Clinic to get a second opinion for that. And then uh, Haley asked me yesterday for mom to put on the privilege, Christy. Um, Christy's had spine surgery once, and she's having some issues. They're going uh, sometime this month to Cleveland Clinic to see if anything new is going on. I talked with Laura yesterday evening, and uh, she gave me information that she wanted me to give to the church, and she wasn't sure if everybody knew it. Thank you for that, Reba. Reba. there's any other, I'll turn it over to Robert for the sermon and communion. Good morning. Good morning. Get adjusted here. We do have several other prayer requests, so I do want to mention those uh, as we go to prayer this morning. Of course, we had the foster families, and Barbara and Ira and Lisa were already mentioned. Uh, my grandmother's still in the uh, rehab center and still about the same. So uh, no worse, thankfully, but also no better. So we do want to continue to remember her. Uh, also, Sylvia, my friend from my previous, from the Anglican church I went to a while back, uh, still having some post-surgical complications. Uh, the surgery itself went fine. It's other things that have happened since then. So we want to continue to remember her. I uh, do have Eddie here. I actually spoke to Laura this morning and, and uh, got much the same report that, that Reba did. Um, I'm not sure every single one of them has COVID at this point, but it has made the run through the family. So we want to remember them. Um, Heather's mom, Candy, uh, they are uh, doing her surgery Friday, and then that'll be followed by four or five weeks of, of radiation. Thankfully, the, the cancer that they found was small, and they caught it early, and so they don't think chemo will be required or anything like that. So this will be a, a surgery and several weeks of radiation, and hopefully that will be the end of it. The prognosis is really, really good. So we are very thankful for that and thankful for everyone's prayers there. Um, I have Tommy and Carolyn here, uh, Linda's sister-in-law, Sandy, still got that. Uh, we do want to continue to pray for uh, Laura, that's uh, Laura Dyer, who filled in here for me just for a healthy delivery and, and that uh, she will have uh, no complications as her pregnancy comes to a close. So she is uh, 
that her doctors hope that she'll go at least four more weeks. Uh, she's about seven weeks out now from her due date. So I um, have a prayer request for Vivian here. We want to continue to remember her. Uh, Heather had an allergic reaction to something. We don't know what. It broke out on Thursday. She's still kind of dealing with some of the it was like small hives and stuff, but we have no idea what she got into. We tried to think back through anything we had eaten that day and everywhere we had been that day, and we're not sure what it was. So just pray that it eases up and that if, if it's something that we run into again, that it's not something serious. Um, do you have a lady we'd like you to remember, and we don't know her first name because I don't think we ever got it, um, but her name is Miss Shirky, and Miss Shirky works at the uh, museum in South Charleston. Uh, right there on D Street next to the LaBelle Theater. We were down there this week with Kaylee, took her in there because it's, it's a nice museum, by the way. If you like museums and you like local history, uh, definitely stop in there. They have a lot of Native American artifacts and information about the mound and the history of South Charleston, and it was, I mean, it was really nice. Um, but when we stopped in, we were the only ones in there. She was the only one working, um, and she, uh, she is an, an older lady, and she got off balance. We're not sure if she didn't pass out in the middle of giving us the tour. Uh, thankfully, we were there because if we had not stopped, I mean, she may have hit the floor. Uh, we managed to be, we were close by anyway. We managed to catch her before she could do that, but she was going all, all the way over. And she was fine pretty quickly. The EMTs came and they were about two steps through the door and she was sitting in a chair and she pointed at him and said, I am fine and I don't need to go, but we want to remember her anyway. Um, she, fell the day she fell the day before, apparently also. So I don't know her first name, but Miss Shirky, uh, if you would remember her as well. Um, and we've got Christy here and I believe that is all the requests that we've received and that we've taken this morning. So let's take time now to go before the throne. Lord, as we come this morning, we are once again thankful to be in your house and thankful for all that you've done for us and all that you've given us. And Lord, we're thankful that as we, we come and, and uh, experience yet another morning and we see your, your goodness and grace all around us, Lord, that you are there to, to listen to our requests and those things that are on our hearts as we bring them to you. Lord, we do think of those foster families and just ask that you continually bless those children and meet the medical needs that we know of, Lord, with one child in particular. Just surround them with your presence and your grace today. Lord, for Barb and Ira, it's, uh, we, we miss them so much when they're not here. Lord, thankfully, I, I uh, had the blessing of running into them on a, a parking lot yesterday. <laughs> and uh, Lord, so good to, to see them, but we know they are missed, and we ask that you continue to touch them and bless them. And Lord, that you would help Barb's treatments to, when they restart to be effective. And, and Lord, that this uh, we know this is in your hands. We we ask for a healing work continually there for her and, and for strength and encouragement for them both. Lord, for Ira too. Lord, for Lisa Thaxton, we pray that as they uh, look at possibly going to Cleveland Clinic and look for whatever news the doctors might have as to what to do, that you would be guiding all of that process. Lord, we pray that you would touch her with your healing power today and, and drive this cancer back and Lord, lift it and take it away from her. We would ask for a healing touch there. Lord, on my grandmother, we ask that you would touch her legs and, and help her to have strength in those again. And, and Lord, that you would lift her up in her spirit and, and just encourage her today. Lord, we know she needs that. And Lord, for Sylvia, we pray that you would be with her in her continued recovery. And Lord, we know she's having a struggle too, that she's not used to being down like this and that's been discouraging. And so Lord, we pray that you would lift her up today also. Bless her and keep her today. Lord, just surround her and John, her husband, and a in a powerful way today. Lord, for Eddie, we pray that you'd be primarily with him and his continued surgical recovery. Lord, we know they've done a lot, but we're thankful that he's been stepping down out of various levels of care and ask that you continue to bless him. But Lord, we do lift that whole family to you as they've been dealing with COVID and it's kind of made the run through the family. And Lord, thankfully, mostly mild symptoms, but we do pray that where they are worse or where folks are not feeling well, that your healing power would be made evident. And Lord, that this would pass quickly and, and without any further incident. Lord, we pray for Heather's mom, Candy, and, and Lord, thankful so much that what they found was, was caught early. 
And Lord, the, the prognosis is very good. We ask that you would be with her this coming week as her surgery is this week. And, and Lord, be with her in the radiation treatments also. That those would go easily, that they would go without a lot of extra side effects. And Lord, that your healing would be made known and made manifest through all of this. Lord, we think of Tommy this morning and just ask that you continue to touch him and, and uh, bring him to healing. And Lord, for Carolyn also, for a measure of strength and uh, just ask that you would encourage her and lift her up too. Lord, we're thankful for the, the good news that we heard about Haley and her graduation. And, and we think of that and lift that to you in praise. Lord, we're so so wonderful, wonderfully thankful and, and proud of her and the work that she's done. Lord, we think of Sandy, uh, Linda's sister-in-law, and ask that you continue to pray or continue to lift her up as we pray for her, Lord, that you would continue to touch her with your healing power and grace in the days to come. Lord, for Laura Dyer, we pray for a healthy delivery of this little one. Lord, we know it's getting closer and closer, and, and Lord, they are praying so much that there would be no complications. And Lord, we, we echo those. Ask that you would be ever-present and close by, and Lord, that this little one's entry into life would be uneventful as far as medical things go, and, but Lord, that it would be a celebration and quite an event that way. And the Lord, we pray for a healthy birth and an a, uh, uncomplicated delivery. Lord, for Vivian, we lift her to you this morning and ask for your continued touch on her. And the Lord, all of the needs that she has, we pray for your healing power to touch her today. And Lord, anything that she might be dealing with, we pray that you would lift the burden and that you would meet the need. Lord, for Heather's reaction that happened at the end of this week, Lord, we're not sure what brought it on or caused it, but Lord, we know you do. Pray that you would help that to not be a further complication. And Lord, whatever it is, that it would remain mild. And, and uh, Lord, that it would not be something that continues to come up over and over again. And for Christy with her spine issues, and, and Lord, we pray that you would touch that. Touch whatever is off. Lord, whatever is not as it should be. We pray for your healing and rest restoring touch to rest on her today. Lord, for Ms. Shirky at the museum, we continue to, to lift her up. Lord, we're thankful that we were able to be there. Lord, we think very sure that that was your hand that sort of nudged us to make an unscheduled stop and check out the museum. And Lord, we're, we're thankful we could be there. Lord, we pray that you continue to be with her today and in the days to come and help, uh, help her to be healthy and to be well. Lord, for the rest of this service, we pray that you would just be present, that you would speak through, through the reading of the word and through the message, or that it would be your words entirely. Bless us as we come to the table. Meet us powerfully there. And we ask it all in the name of Christ. Amen. Well, if you have a Bible with you, I would encourage you to turn over to the book of Hebrews. We're going into the New Testament today. Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to hang out in the first part of that chapter today for a little bit. One quick note I should mention, because I know some of you have, have uh, very lovingly but regularly reminded me that I haven't really taken a vacation this year. Um, we booked a vacation. <laughs> we are, uh, we're going to be out of town, of, I think the second Sunday of September, I believe that is. We're going to be gone a Friday to a Friday. We're taking a whole week and, and uh, getting out of town a little bit. So we're actually, uh, this is going to probably come as no surprise to you, but for the third year in a row, we're going back to Williamsburg. We, we like that area of Virginia. We like Colonial Williamsburg. There's so much to see and do in that area. So we're going to, going to take off for a week. Uh, that'll be early September, the second, second Sunday, I think that is, like the 9th through the 9th through the 16th will be gone. So Sunday, the, I think it's Sunday the 11th, actually, will be gone. Um, so yeah, have that on your calendars. That week will be... We'll be out. I'm not sure who's filling in yet. I'm working on that. Uh, also working on nailing down revival evangelist and all that stuff because everybody that I've asked has had either things come up or uh, blocked up schedules. So I'm still working on that too. But I'll let you know as soon as those fall in. But I, I do appreciate those of you who have very kindly reminded me that it's okay to take a week off. And uh, <laughs> so we are going to do that. Hebrews 11 this morning. This is one of those favorite subjects and favorite passages of mine. Again, I feel like this has almost been a summer of Bible passages we already know. We've, we've run through several like this. Maybe that'll be the name of a future sermon series at some point. I don't know. 
But today, the subject is again one of those things that we talk about all the time, but it is of utmost importance. We're going to talk about faith this morning. And this is one of those places, too, where the author in the New Testament is talking about people from the Old Testament who we also already know. This is going to be a passage full of familiar names and probably familiar events. I don't think any of these will be, be lost on anyone. But don't let that be a reason not to pay close attention. Because as foundational as faith is, and how most of you likely already have it in good measure, I would imagine, we can't let that simply become a given that just sort of sits in the background that we take for granted. It's one of those things we do always need to kind of check and recheck in our walk with Christ because without it, we would be a mess. But with it, God can do amazing things through it, what seems to be impossible means sometimes. We bring a little faith and God does enormous things through that. So we're going to take a look. And this is Hebrews chapter 11, and I'm going to read uh, the first 16 verses. Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 16. A very famous passage here. The scripture says this. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith Abel offered to God, more, God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous, God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith Enoch was taken up, so that he should not see death, and he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born descendants, as many as the stars of heaven, and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return, but as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. Let's pray together. Lord, as we look at these examples today of, of great faith, Lord, let them be reminders to us that in small things and large things, and, and Lord, everything out in front of us, that when we place our faith in you, you have all of that in hand. Bless us and keep us today, Lord. Encourage us through your spirit and through the word. Speak through the message, Lord, that they would not be my words, but they would be yours. Hide me in the shadow of your cross today and be glorified alone. And we ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. Now, Hebrews is, is a fantastic book. If you've never spent a lot of time reading in it, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, I've heard someone say along the way, if you had only the book of Hebrews and one of the Gospels, you would have everything you needed to know to live a powerful and effective Christian life. And I, I think that's very true. There's a lot in Hebrews 
to teach us. There's a lot of meat in here. Hebrews is one of the few books in the entire Bible for which the author is a mystery. We, uh, we don't know who wrote it. There are theories to beat the band. Uh, probably the most common one is Paul, but Paul has signed every other book he ever wrote, and there's no no attribution in this book at all. We could say it's Apollos. There are some that think it was a woman named Priscilla. There are other theories still, but the point is, even though we don't know who it is, we know this, that whoever it is most definitely knew the scripture and knew Christ as Lord and draws incredible connections in those things. Many parts of Hebrews are quotable and powerful and, and memorable, but this one, is probably one of my favorites. This one is, gets called the Hall of Fame of Faith sometimes. If you read the entire chapter, it moves on through Abraham and down through Moses and, and back again through David and other people who the author even says, you know, we don't even have time to tell all these stories, but names off several other names, Gideon and David and, and those folks. But it's a powerful place. It's, faith is one of those things that we cannot do without. I mean, if we don't have faith, we have no belief. And if we have no belief, then we have no hope. And if we have no hope, there's nothing to live for. And if that's the case, what are we doing here? I mean, faith is the foundation of everything about us. And it starts right off with a definition. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. I've also heard it called the evidence of things not seen or being certain of what we cannot see. That may seem like a very tall order because in some, some ways it would be hard to believe all this without seeing it, except we do. I mean, even looking back from a place of faith already, that can seem like a very tall order, but we quickly see that faith is not blind. It is different than just an ignorant leap into the unknown. It is not blind. We go in with eyes open. We see evidence that leads us to believe. We see it in the universe, all of it, and its beauty and complexity. And I've, I have walked around with pictures on the iPad just in the last few weeks of recent pictures from telescopes and things that the Hubble took and all of that to, to, to show and explain the, the glory of this universe. But it's through faith that we understand that that stuff ultimately comes from the Word of God. We see it in Genesis when, we, when he speaks it into existence. We see it in John at the beginning of the gospel. In the beginning was the word, and it later says, through him all things were created. Now, none of that negates the science that tells us about it, but science ends up ending in a hypothesis about what might have brought it into being or how that might have worked. We can look at the science and accept all of those factual parts and see our faith connected to it, not challenged but bolstered when we see that this is what God has done. I mean, if the universe is as vast and innumerable and unmeasurable as NASA says it is, and I think they're right, then how much more incredible must God be? I don't have one problem taking both of those things together. If nothing else, it just puts me in even more wonder of God's creation. In just three short verses, the writer of Hebrews has put faith into this cosmic scale. I mean, it's, it's enormous to start out. And then it could seem almost impossibly high and hard if we just stopped right there and said, well, this is faith, and we see the universe, now go do it. That, that would be tough. But he immediately dials down to these examples. We start to see how faith is lived out. If you want to know how faith works, look at people throughout the scripture who had faith and what they did with it. And you can quickly see how that can grow in all of us, too. Because we see real-life examples of faith in action. After an intro like that, you could be expecting impossible things. But instead, you find something that seems very attainable. It's very reasonable. Because the very first thing right after that is Abel bringing an acceptable sacrifice. He brought it in faith that God would accept it, and God did, and God was pleased. I realize this, that we went from this cosmic scale to now suddenly it's worship. Worship is an act of faith. It is an exercise of our faith, and that was the very first thing listed here in all of this long, and it goes on for the next chapter and 
ties through beautifully in chapter 12. You, you should really read those two together if you, have the, if you take the time. But we get this huge big picture of faith, and then we see, now this is how, it, how it's exercised. Worship. It's the very first place. And that's doable. The cosmic scale seems a little big to get our heads around, but worship, that's what we're here doing this morning. Right worship, faithful worship, that is reasonable. One of the most profound acts of faith is not making conjectures about the universe or commanding mountains to jump and be thrown into the sea. It is giving God the glory for who He is. It is worshiping Him. Bring your heart to God. God, give it to him in worship, all of it. That's what we're commanded to do. It says that you are a living sacrifice. In other words, all of you is consumed by the fire of God. That's worship. That is what we are called to be. Come and worship. Lift your heart to God and find him pleased with your praise. Faith pleases God. That's a powerful thing. And suddenly we've gone from that universal scale to this really doable thing of worshiping. And then it grows from there. The narrative starts to continue with things that I feel like would require a little more faith. I mean, some things in life will, right? I think sometimes it's a little easier to handle the small stuff and go, I have faith for that. And then look at the huge things and go, eh. <laughs> I'm not sure I have enough faith for that thing. Well, the writer of Hebrews has anticipated that and follows up this first graspable thing with tougher stuff. We arrive at Noah. Can you imagine living in a world where it had never rained before? Because we're pretty sure it had not before the flood. I mean, Genesis tells us that the, the earth was watered by a mist that came up from the ground starting in the Garden of Eden. Now it may have started raining after they were kicked out. We're not sure, but we don't see it before that. But we've never seen a flood like this at this point especially in the middle of the desert, because we, we sort of think they were probably living on the Sinai Peninsula or somewhere in that area that arid and dry and not a lot of rain, if it rained at all. So put that picture in your mind and then get that picture of God coming down and telling you you're going to need to build a boat because there's more water coming than you've ever imagined. That takes big faith. It takes very big faith. You need to save your family. It's going to rain. It's going to take you a hundred years to build this boat. Did you know that? It took Noah and his family a hundred years to build the thing. They stayed committed through that entire process. Would you have enough faith for that? That's a stretch. That's a hard thing. But Noah did. He followed through. And look closely, though. God did not leave Noah to his own devices. He warned him. He gave him the plans. And then God carried him through. Faith was not about having to force a bunch of actions. It was about listening and then following. Trusting that God would do what God said he would do. And that's key. Faith is necessary, which is kind of our first point. It is exercised every day in our worship and those things. But now faith is also trust. And God has proven over and over and over again that he can be trusted. Because he has never failed. I'm, I'm not talking about failing any individuals. God has never failed, period. Failure is not an experience that God has ever had. And so he is always trustworthy, and we can always place our faith in him, no matter the size of the thing we might be placing into his hands. If it is necessary, it is exercised every day, and it is trust. Faith is abiding in that trustworthiness of God and you will always find that to be true and Abraham was the same called away from his home called to a new country promised a child in his old age Abraham was pushing 100 years old anybody know any 100 year olds that are ready to chase a toddler around Abraham was he was faithful about it and God had promised him this several times. He promised this to him over a period of years. And for a long time still, no heir came. And then we've, we've had that story where we talk about Abraham jumping the gun and taking Hagar as sort of a, his, well, his wife's maid servant and conceiving who ended up being Ishmael with her because God had waited so long to fulfill his promise. But God still held up his end of the bargain. 
Even when people started to mess it up, God was still faithful to exactly what he said. And so Abraham follows, and Abraham receives that child of promise. And then he's called to sacrifice that child of promise. Can you imagine that? God had taken him to a new country. He gave him Isaac, and then he says, Now lay him on the altar and kill him. And Abraham still obeyed God. And at the very last second, God says, I see your faith. Spare the child. Because he himself had provided a ram in the thicket, which is exactly what he did. God's faithfulness once again. And Abraham knew it on the way up the hill. Do you remember that? They're on the way up the mountain. And Isaac is old enough to understand what's going on. Looks around and says, Behold, Father, the the wood and the fire for the sacrifice. But where is the lamb? And Abraham's response was not, You're it, sorry. He says, God himself will provide. So he already knew. He already trusted In what seemed impossible circumstances, Abraham had faith and God came through. And that should never surprise us. We exercise faith. God always comes through. Now I'm not talking about this whole name it and claim it thing. That's a whole different thing. You can stand in your front yard and claim by faith that God's going to give you a million dollars all you want to. I'm not sure what you put your faith in, but that's not how God works. But when we we claim faith in what we know to be true, God's promises for us, the ones we find in here, not the ones we find from crazy ideas somewhere else, the ones we find in here. Like Abraham knew God had promised him this child, and he had promised him heirs, and he had promised him descendants. And so he was operating in that promise. And then even in that moment, he knew, well, God's going to have to provide something else because this is the promise that he gave me here. Standing on what he knew. Folks, God promises to always walk with us and carry us through anything that we might face. And we can bank on that. In the hardest of circumstances, we can still run back to God's promise and go, I am absolutely standing in faith on this, that I know you're with me. That I know you will walk with me through this, that you will not abandon me in whatever it is. And we can have that same sort of faith as Abraham. Now the outcome of this earth thing might not work like we thought, but we will never, ever find God leaving us alone. Faith is the foundation of all of that. It is every day. It is trust. It is obedience. It is generative. It grows the church. It grows faith. When we have it and other people see it and other people want it, they come and they find it. They find God sitting at the center of it. changes their entire lives. And faith is also, finally, hopeful. It has to be. These all had promises that God had made, that they had looked forward to and believed in before they had them. Abraham knew that child was coming. Now, he messed up partway through the middle. But he knew that child was coming, and he came. He knew that that land was out there somewhere, but he didn't know where it was. God says, I'm going to show you. And he says, okay. And he follows. And you know what? They got there eventually. Took time. Took process. But they got there. Abraham did not live long enough to see the Israelites arrive there. But that did not negate God's promise. He still kept it. These people had faith in God's promises even when they had not seen them yet. Because faith was hopeful looked forward to what God was going to do. And that was, as we've seen with Abraham, and that's as we've seen with Moses, and as we saw with various other people throughout the Old and New Testaments. And that is what we see when we look forward to Christ's return, the ultimate consummation and completion and resurrection in God's plan. We haven't seen that final resurrection yet, but we hope in it. And it will come. God is faithful to keep that promise, just as he's faithful to keep all the others. As you see, in every one of these cases, they believed it, even though they hadn't seen it, and God came through. God has inspired the writers of the scripture to make sure that we know exactly who he is and to know who Christ is. And we believe that the very essence of faith is to believe in hope. And we believe what Christ has done and who he was and all that he promised, just as all of these believed in or hoped in him even before he came. They knew a Messiah was coming, and so they looked forward to that. And our hope is at the end of the passage, because folks, it says, These died not having received those things, 
yet. I'm adding yet, but it's implied didn't mean they weren't going to, it just meant they hadn't seen it. And then it goes on to explain about the nation and all of that. But then it goes on to explain about that homeland and about that city whose builder and maker is God. We haven't seen that eternal hope tangibly. But God was faithful to the promise and is faithful to the promise. That homeland that Abraham hoped for, the promised land, for the children of God and that homeland that we look forward to in the eternal presence of God, the better country, the heavenly one. My friends, if we accept the rest by faith, then we can know by faith that that city is our city. And though we haven't received it yet, we will one day because God is faithful. Now, faith is a struggle. Just know first that that is normal sometimes. Everybody has struggles, everybody has doubts, everybody works through those things. But those are the moments where you have to stand on what we know and not on what we feel. Those are very different things. Work faith out of a place of feeling and into a place of knowledge. Because our faith does not need to be shaken by emotions. Faith is a truth. Faith is the thing that we hope in. We know it is there. Make that choice to have faith. Make that choice to continue to believe. And then ask God to fill your heart with that fire of faith so that you can feel it also. And then look through those eyes and see all of his promises. And this is more for people online just because I feel like I know everybody in the room here, but I would say this if you're worshiping with us, hi, we're glad you're here. And if you've never fully placed your faith in him, today's the day. And the scripture tells us that in other places. It says even now is the appointed time and that today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off for another minute. If you're watching this and you're feeling a stirring here, listen, that's not me, that's God talking to you. So listen to that. Place your faith in him because if you're feeling him speak, you obviously know he's there. Place your faith all the way and hang on for the ride. But place your faith there. Because faith is that thing that helps us to stand firm through any test. Faith is the thing that quenches the attacks of the enemy. Ephesians 6 tells us that. And it's our sustenance in those hard times. The thing that carries us through those dark valleys. And it is the way that we know that our eternal hope awaits. Folks, by faith they believed. And by faith we believe. And by faith we live. And so by faith we have hope in that eternal home. Amen? Amen. Amen. Tell you something else. Jesus told us that he would meet us in these very humble means here at the communion table, and I have faith to believe that too. We're going to move to the table here in, in just a second. I, I don't think we have any guests that I recognize. I would just say for folks watching online, if you're ever here and it's communion Sunday, you are welcome at the table. You don't have to be a member of the church or a Methodist or anything like that. Uh, I will do the usual thing when I uncover the congregation's elements. I will mask up and glove up just to be sure. Uh, I have no reason to think I have been exposed to anything, but I don't want to take any chances. So uh, you all don't have to do that. that that's just an uh, extra measure I want to take to make sure nobody else picks anything up. Uh, if you have your hymnals, turn them to page 13. That is uh, the middle of a service of word and table number two, I believe, and we'll pick up right at the great thanksgiving. Um, and Jim, I think I forgot to ask you this before the service, but could you assist me here in a few minutes? Thank you. We'll move to the table now. When you get to page 13, if you would stand, please. And if it is difficult for you to stand or you're unable to, that you can't stand physically, stand in your heart and in your spirit. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. 
When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation and neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, and heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor to proclaim release to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. For this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. Make them to be for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. And the blood of Christ, shed for you. My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. I'm going to ask Jim to come. Uh, the congregation can be seated until you're ready to come up front. And I'll also ask Ron and Carolyn to, to come. We can serve you and uh, have music also.
me say it too, if, if you cannot come up front for any reason, we'll bring communion back to you. So don't let that be a don't let that be a hindrance. We'll make sure that you can receive also.
close this morning by singing hymn number 389 in the United Methodist hymn book. 389. Freely, freely. Thank you. 